what's the name of this topic? Uh, series and sequences. Series and sequences, very much. What's the difference in a sequence and a series? Do we know yet? Uh, yeah. A series hmm. like, so, so here's the way I think about it. Um, there are three interconnected ideas here. One of them we actually haven't dealt with since like term one, I want to say. And that's a set. What's a set? I've been thinking about this for a while. A set's a... Um, a set. It's a sequence of numbers. And this is interesting. I'm, I'm going to make a parallel comparison with a sequence, but I'm also going to distinguish them. So what's in common between a set and a sequence is you've got a bunch of things. Yeah. A collection of objects, as it were. Right? But I think we would agree that the set, the set, um, Ashani, Shambhavi, Shalina, is the same as the set Shambhavi, Ashani, Shalina. That's the same set of objects, right? Of people. But a sequence, as the name suggests, takes a set and it imposes on it something special. ABC is not the same sequence as CBA, right? Does that make sense? The order suddenly matters, right? So a sequence, order matters. Um, a series is what we're really having a look at today. So it's slightly a trick question. So what happens when you take a sequence and then you add up all of the terms? Hence the title you can see today. You can write it down now if you like, but I mostly just want to show you what's going to go on here. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you an arithmetic progression. By the way, a progression is just a general term for both a sequence or a series. doesn't tell you what you're doing with them. Are you listing them? Are you adding them up? doesn't matter. When you take an arithmetic progression like this one, I know that it's sufficiently simple that we could just go and do this by hand. Like you just add up 1 plus 3 is 4, plus 5 is 9, and then all, on and on and on, right? I know you could do that, but what I want to do is try and analyze this for deeper structure. I want to see if we can understand this better so that when you do get a sequence or a series that's like gross and messy and you can't just do in your head, can we come up with a more systematic and simple way to do it? So here's what I'm going to do. Like I said before, I want to do this very visually. Do you agree that this is a way to represent 1 plus 3 plus 5 plus 7, etc.? Are you happy with that? Okay, so what I want to do is have a little bit of a play with this visual representation. Okay, now for starters, this is what we've got: one, all the odd numbers from one through to eleven. Okay, now what I'm going to do next is going to look like it makes things worse, but it actually takes advantage of a feature that an arithmetic progression has. Here's what I'm going to do: I'm going to make another copy of this arithmetic. Progression. So I don't have 1 plus 3 plus all the way to 11. I've got double that. Are you okay with that so far? Yes. Okay. And we still don't know what that's equal to, but that's okay. Now, let me just wind back for a second to explain why I might do this. What is it that makes an arithmetic progression like this? What makes this an arithmetic progression as compared to, say, for example, uh, 1 plus 3 plus 5 plus 8? That is not an arithmetic progression. What does this have that that doesn't? Mo, go ahead. It's got a consistent pattern. It's, thank you, Tyler. Um, it's, it's consistent in what way? How can you describe that pattern? It has a common difference. It's got a common difference. Thank you. That's, that's the key, right? What we're looking for is from here to here is 2, from here to here is 2. I'd like the next thing to also be the same difference, right? And that's what we have here. Now, because we've got a common difference between each one, this gap here, this gap here, this gap here, this gap here, etc. Do you notice it's the same going forwards as going backwards? Like the difference is the same going backwards. So watch really carefully. Because I've got two copies of this now, I can rearrange them in a way that's more helpful, namely like this. Now, why is this a more helpful way to think about it, right? Well, number one, because it's arithmetic, how it grows is the same as how it shrinks. I'm just looking at it from two different perspectives, yeah? But secondly, the reason why this is so vastly superior is because I've got a rectangular array and we can work out the total size of this really, really quickly, okay? Before we do that, I just want to highlight each of these columns that I've got, they're the same height. Um, I could describe that height in a bunch of different ways, but again, look carefully, the change is subtle. A way that I think would be helpful is that each of these columns is the same as the first column. And the first column, of course, is made up of the first and the last term jammed together. Does that make sense? So if we consider them all as the same column, you can see I've got six lots, six columns, each of which is the first plus the last term. You with me so far? Yeah. Okay, so far, so good. 
So now that I've done the visual, I now want to think about this. This is what's going to help me. Okay? So when we think about this, this is the part that I want. Actually, there's not much work that needs to be done. What operation do I need to conduct on both sides that gives me just the original arithmetic series? What do I do to both sides? Let's get this. Hold that thought. Get this to your career. Who are you looking for? I have a detention. Adidia? Lunchtime? Yeah. He remembers. Thank you. Anyone else? Uh, yeah, that's fine. 823. 823. You know the drill. Okay. Um, I hit pause on you. Can you tell me? What's the thing I do to both sides? Divide by two. I divide by two, right? Okay, now, this is what I want. But now that I've got this, this is the real key, okay? This is just for a particular progression that you could have just added up by hand, okay? But now that I have this way of understanding it, right? I can do this for any arithmetic progression you ever hand me. I just need to know how many columns will you get? What are the first and last terms? And then um, why am I dividing by two again? Because I, I duplicated in order to do this like geometric trick, right? So in other words, to summarize, if I've got any arithmetic series, start at some term, right? <laughs> I, I'm, by the way, I'm using a formula that's um, been used many, many times. We well, call the first term A, wouldn't you call the last term Z? Answer, no, of course not, because we want to make it weird and confusing. L for last term, okay? And if you've got n terms along the way, then what have I got here? Right? And this is worth writing down underneath your heading. You've got n, because this is how many columns you've got. right? That's how many columns you've got. Each column consists of the same thing. It's the first and the last term just kind of joined together. And then you divide by 2. Why? Because we duplicated this whole series in order to do that geometric trick in the first place. OK? 